Hey there. Have you ever heard of phasmophobia? Odds are, if you've been at least somewhat invested in the gaming community for the last two months or so, you've probably at least heard of this game. But if you haven't, well, then holy moly am I going to tell you. So what is phasmophobia? Well, other than being the fear of ghosts, it's a game made by this guy, DK Nighter who is also the creator of the studio Kinetic Games. I'm pretty sure this entire game was made by one guy and one guy only. So DK Nighter, if that's true, then oh man, you deserve an award because this game is amazing. So, Phasmophobia is an online horror co-op game where you play as ghost hunters and you get contracted for jobs to go into people's houses or other buildings that are presumed haunted and find and hunt down ghosts. Now, already, this game has an extremely unique premise that I would never have thought to make a game about. I have to say off the bat, I don't generally play horror games because well, I'm a little baby scaredy cat, but I have played a few, like the newer Resident Evil games or Five Nights at Freddy's, or, or Cry of Fear. Okay, I haven't, I haven't really played that many horror games. So coming from that perspective, this is probably the scariest game I've ever played. But to prove that this isn't just coming from a guy who doesn't like scary games, I've asked some of my friends who are spooky game aficionados, and they even say that this is one of the scariest games they've ever played. So how's it work? Well. You start off in your ghost hunter van with all the basic gadgets you need. These gadgets include things like an EMF reader, which will tell you how active a ghost is if that said ghost is near your location. There's also the ghost journal, which if left in a specific ghost room, will reveal some spooky messages like die, 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 or some satanic symbols or something of the like. There's the UV light, which will show you if the ghost has been around your location by revealing fingerprints on doors and windows and such. And lastly, there's the ghost box. This is where the real spooky stuff happens. The way the ghost box works is that you have to be put in a room by yourself with all the lights turned off and have a conversation with the ghost to see if it's active. Using the spirit box is probably the most tense situation you'll ever be in inside of this game. Aside from a hunting, which I'll get into later. But the reason I say that is because you know there's a ghost waiting in this exact same room with you. And it will kill you if given the chance. So, let's say you find your ghost and you successfully exit a mission. Then you'll be awarded with a certain amount of cash depending on how many objectives you do in a mission. There's a bunch more items you can buy with the cash you receive, but... There's way too many to go over in just this video, but they all have their certain cool, unique uses that I'll let you guys figure out for yourselves. So, how do you even find a specific ghost? Well, the way you determine a ghost type is by finding three specific pieces of evidence. Like, for example, there's a ghost type called the demon. I'm sure a lot of you know what a demon is. Finding a demon would require you to conclusively find freezing temperatures, ghost writing, and to talk with it in the spirit box. Oh, and I didn't say this before, but freezing temperatures can be visible uh, by cold breath coming out of your character's mouth, or later down the line, you can use a thermometer that you can buy with cash to make things a lot easier. So if you successfully find all three pieces of evidence, you return back to your truck with your buds and extract if you're lucky enough to extract, that is. You see, in many situations, the ghost you're dealing with is a bit of an asshole and will try and kill you, like, like a lot. <laughs> if you really piss a ghost off by calling him a poo-poo head or something, then he will most likely go into what's called hunting mode, which is the scariest thing imaginable. All the lights around you start flashing, the doors lock, your constant footsteps, and all the comms are down. All you can do is attempt to hide, throw a crucifix, and hope the ghost goes away, or die. It's an extremely tense situation, and it's probably one of the best parts about this game. I just mentioned comms, and that's another very interesting part of this game. Sure, 
you can load up a Discord call and play this game with your buds like any other game. But the way you should really experience this game is through proximity chat. So there's two forms of prox chat that you can use in this game. Regular voice proximity chat and radio comms. Regular voice chat is used for basic communications with friends that are in, you know, the same general location as you. It sounds pretty clear and has minimal issues. Comms, on the other hand, are meant for long-range communication between crewmates, as staying in the van gives players much-needed info, like access to security cams, or a screen that shows the current ghost activity in the house, or a map of the building you're investigating, and uh, among other things. So, having a person stay in the van and be your man on the outside is always a good option, and you'll need to use comms for it. But the interesting part is, is that comms can go down when the ghost is in hunting mode, and the man in the van won't be able to inform the people inside of the danger that awaits. Uh, this can lead to some terrifying moments trying to get in contact with your van man, only to learn that the ghost shut down comms and is now hunting you and trying to kill you. So, if you were to play this game, it is highly recommended you play with proximity chat enabled, as it adds so much to the experience. But if what I just described to you sounds pretty simple, basic, or unscary, I think you'll just have to play the game to understand what I mean. Because when I say this game can be fucking scary, I mean this game can be fucking scary. <laughs> but anyways, once again, that's just one man's opinion. I'd really like to know what you think of Phasmophobia, if you've ever played it. If I had to give one suggestion to DK Nighter, if you're watching this, uh, it would have to be to please hire a development crew. There is so much potential for new content in this game, <laughs> but you know us gamers. We have very small attention spans and will leave this game if new things aren't added. And I don't want this game to die out. So please, and I say this with as much love as possible, hire at least a few more people to make this game so much better than it already is. But anyway, that's, uh, that's pretty much it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I really hope I'll see you guys around next time. Alright, bye bye